In a real agility organization, managers also play another important role, which is to be mentors for certain of their staff who need extra support. Mentoring is about relationships. So when you have a mentoring relationship, the manager is responsible for helping someone on their staff, possibly multiple people, who have a lack of knowledge or skill, and the mentor develops a relationship to enable those staff to be open to receiving advice and guidance. However, the thing that's different about mentoring from traditional management is that there's no authority here in the sense of no ability to direct someone, tell them what to do, hold them accountable, and possibly punish them if they don't do the right thing. Instead, it's another form of education. In a mentoring relationship, you have to have a different kind of authority, namely the authority that you have the skill or the knowledge or the experience that the staff member lacks and that you're going to be transferring that one-on-one -on -one to that person. The mentoring relationship also requires trust. So if you're the kind of person who in the past was, um, let's call it a nasty micromanager, you're going to have a long ways to go to build that trust with your staff. And the change is going to be even harder for you. Nevertheless, being able to build that trust and establish mentoring relationships is incredibly important. There are some stages to the mentoring relationship. The first stage, of course, is simply establishing the relationship. Critical in the establishment stage is that there is some sort of goal set. Now, it doesn't have to be terribly formal, but there has to be a reason or a purpose for the creation of the mentoring relationship. The second stage of the mentoring relationship is to acknowledge the skill or the knowledge gap. And in this case, for example, you might acknowledge that you as a manager have a very strong technical background and the person that you're going to be mentoring lacks that technical background but needs to gain those skills. Kind of like a master and apprentice relationship. Of course, we usually call apprentices interns these days, but it's the same idea. The third stage is about the dynamic between the two people involved. How does help get offered or requested? Is it simply through a verbal uh, discussion? Is it through accompaniment? You actually spend time working side by side with your mentored person. Um, and that dynamic, of course, can change over the course of the relationship, but it is important to know are they going to be asking for help or are you going to be delivering help? And to set expectations. So this is really about setting expectations. Of course, the fourth stage is actually doing the mentoring. And this stage can last a long time. Sometimes it can be years long, of course. But usually if there's a clear goal, what happens then is that after that goal has been achieved, you get to the fifth stage, which is what happens about closing off the relationship. When you close the relationship, especially if you've been successful, that will usually lead to an ongoing friendship, not just a mentoring relationship. Of course, if the goal hasn't been successfully achieved, you probably have to look at other more formal ways of providing skill. But that close will then lead to other possibilities for action and support. In real agility, the managers really do have to change a lot about how they behave. You're no longer directing people, making decisions for people. Instead, you're providing a supportive environment for them to get their work done. And in real agility, mentoring is one of the critical tools for you to use. Contact us at Bertig. We transform people, process, and culture through the power of real agility.